Welcome, Ryan, to another episode of Between Two Pints. I'm your host, Rob, and with me, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, thanks. My name is Ryan Adam Oil, and I'm the writer and director of Paradox coming up. Cool. Now I know how to pronounce your last name, because I've only <laughs> ever read it on Facebook. That's true. <laughs> so what is Paradox? Good beer, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, Paradox is a sci-fi web series about this man who travels back in time and he's trying to redeem his past, which is our future. Right. How far, okay, so when he travels back in time, how far does he go? Is he going from the distant future to the current day, or to the distant future to the near, near future? Distant future to the current day. Excellent. Yeah. So you're shooting sci-fi and modern era, which makes it, must yeah. make it a little bit easier. A little bit easier. Um, still a lot of tweaks, still a lot of hurdles, but um, ah, it's really fun, really fun to do. So what have you shot so far? Well, we shot episode one, and we, sh we kept that in the vault for quite a while. So, um, the project kept coming, the project kept coming, so we had to push it off for a while. But now, we've already started into project two, and we've got about half of project two in the can. So. Episode two? Yeah. And now, I heard a rumor that there is somebody I know in episode one, from a project I do, perhaps? Is that okay to say? Yeah, go ahead. All right, Tara. Tara, who is our Wendy on Standard Action, the Sorcerer. Yep, Tara did a really good job. In fact, so much so that I want to bring her back in episode three or four, but right now there are just so many visual effects, so many visual effects in Paradox that instead of trying to um, rush out one, I'm making sure that I get three in the can before I even release one. Okay, cool. So you said a lot of visual effects. What camera are you shooting on? The first one was shot way back in the day on a 7D. Right. And, um, EX, EX1, Sony EX1. And mm -hmm. now what are you shooting on now? Shooting on a Blackmagic 4K. Do you feel that'll help your effects a lot? Totally. But the thing is, you have to have storage. You have to have so much storage. Like, because, okay, we might shoot a whole, say, a day is, um, what, 500 gigabytes is a full day? So, okay, you get 500 gigabytes, and about two-thirds of those are visual effects shots. Well, each visual effects shot you do, you render out passes. So one pass, maybe if your, your clip is just one gigabyte, then you render out a pass. That's another however many size. And, pass after pass after pass and before you know it that one shot turns into like 30 gigabytes does that make sense it does make sense but you know it sounds like you've talked about this before what do you do during the day Ryan? <laughs> that is a good segue <laughs> um okay i teach over at capilano i teach filmmaking at the in indigenous independent filmmaking program at capilano and i'm doing my master's over at ubc in film production and creative writing cool yeah. what do you think your thesis over at ubc is going to be hard to say I'm also in production where we're doing my feature film, Blood Brothers, right now. Mm -hmm. And... Oh, do you, is there a possibility of you choosing? Yes. So it's right up, it's right now in the air between both because we're doing such good headway on Paradox 2, but we're also right full steam ahead on Blood Brothers. So I'm at a crossroads, but I think I'm just going to try to do it both and just keep working at it. So I do this stuff at home anyway, so might as well just shoot it. Excellent, excellent. All right, well, let's focus on Paradox today, because that way I can get you back to talk about Blood Brothers. Oh, okay. I know a couple people in that, like Paul, who's uh, the lead. It's going to be really exciting. But yeah, so let's talk more about Paradox. Um, <clears throat> you said it was going to be the distant future, moving in the back into the past. Uh, have there been any plugins in After Effects? I'm an After Effects guy. I know you're a bit of an After Effects guy. Have there been any plugins you found really useful for that? I'm a monster After Effects guy. I would say use Element 3D as one of our, our main ones. We love the video copilot stuff. Uh, I Twitch actually, is great. I've, been, I've been using Element and Twitch in season three of Standard Action. I used Twitch in the Dream World sequences, and I used Element to make uh, a spaceship fly by in the first episode. Yeah, it's great for spaceships, hey? Oh, yeah, man. <clears throat> I got the. Um, well, I use Poser, is what I use. I don't know how to rig or animate robots. And in Paradox, we got robots, is what we started having. And so in Poser, you kind of get this nice thing where you can animate them. And then I export an animated OBJ sequence, bring it on over, and bam, you got this. Walking anime. robot. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now, we talked about this beforehand, but uh, I thought what a great question would be um, is, now you've got Paradox. It's about a man who travels from the future to the present to fight robots and, and other things. If you could do, if you had to do a four t television season arc, what would you do? Yeah, we started on this and now I'm still thinking about it, but okay, so... Before, and I think we talked about this before is that I, I did this show called Cord before and this is actually tying on to some of that so I'm actually trying to reach back into this old web series and I still have the footage and kind of use that as flashbacks and then so I'm thinking 
I've always had a thing with sound, hey? I always like where sound things are happening. So in the, in the original of Chord, the future has no sound in it. Basically, like these huge sound bombs went off in the everywhere in the sky. So people, when they communicate, they can't talk because if they start talking to each other like we were doing, all of a sudden it would act unpredictably. You might get high-pitched whine and kind of knock you out. So everyone signs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Follow me so far? It's good beer. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, and you need to catch up. Jeez, I do, yeah. Okay, so uh, let's see. Season arc. I would like my character to A... First, at the beginning of the first episode, he rediscovers everyone, finds Cord. That would be kind of the samurai showdown at the end. Second one would be the key. The key is cool because it's like this 3D key. Now, I can't really go into it without talking about the story, but it reaches all into the past and puts it all together. Right. And the third, I was like samurais. I was like this whole thing, the samurai showdown or whatever. Right. And in this whole thing of Cord, we had her killing herself. They were trying to kill herself. Like, my character would kind of get her in a headlock. And the only way she could kill him, get out of this whole situation, was if she basically put the lightsaber through her stomach to get my guy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So kind of like epic <laughs> showdowns like that, you know? Right. Yeah, so... Would you kill major characters? Yes. How many would you kill? Do you think over four seasons? <sighs> Depends on how many I can get. But I would say... Oh, jeez. If I had ten characters, I would say three would be up on the guillotine. For In the four seasons? Yeah, yeah. Do you think you'd kill somebody in the first season just to set the tone right at the end for possibly Sean Bean? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. As you can see, I'm open to interpretation at this point. Excellent, excellent. Well, I, uh, I guess we have time for a few more questions. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you have three episodes right now that you're planning to shoot for Paradox. Yeah. How many episodes is going to be in the first season? Four. Four episodes. Because each episode takes... 10 minutes and there are so many visual effect shots in it that it takes at least a month to do in post-production so I can only make four and then we'll see what happens but that's what I'm aiming for right now and if if there are no major life surprises how long do you think it would take for you to have those four available when we got finished two done if I keep shooting at the pace I'm going uh, I'm going pretty strong right now though so I would say September October September, October is pretty respectable. Of this year, 2015? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Releasable stuff by, depending on the composer, December. And now are you thinking uh, episode one is going to be December, or do you think you might have it out before then? I have, to, I have to talk to my team, find out about like marketing stuff and all that sort of stuff, because I don't just want to release them and then no one watches it, right? So I kind of want to figure out, okay, well, who wants to see this stuff? But I always want quality first, right? So. Right, absolutely. Man, this is... Really good. All right, Ryan, let's chug this back and finish our episode. Awesome. To Between Two Pints. Between Pints. Drink along with us and leave your comments in the comments below. <laughs> All right. No, you got to chug it. Really? <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, man. So... This is 6%, and it's uh, a Bayard's farmhouse saison, and apparently, I think a Bayard, they said, was a was a type of magical horse that would change its size for its rider. It was like a war horse. So yeah, I picked that up on the way home today. I can see why now. That... I should have had dinner. <laughs> oh, this is delicious. Oh, just waiting on Maybe me, aren't you? I'm working on it. I can't cut till you're done, man. Don't worry, I have snacks. <sighs> Got 45 seconds. <laughs> Two pints. All right, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cut. <laughs>